Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. I'm currently standing in the middle of a dental clinic in Germany. Not sure how I ended up here, but there's a big empty tank behind me, so this should be a good video. Let's get started. So I'm here with my good friend Yuris. If you don't know who this guy is, I'll leave his Instagram and his YouTube channel in the video description. Definitely check it out. Mate, why are we standing in a German dental clinic? Uh, we are here today because I invited MJ to join me on this, you can call it private customer project. And it is, by the way, sponsored by Daniel Plants. So shout out for them for providing all the plants. I'm super excited to create a new and very colorful, I don't know, is it going to be colorful? Yeah, we have we, some. We have to think of the kids here. So it yeah. has to be a fun layout. A yeah. fun layout, lots of color. Yeah. For sure. So, and it's going to be super cool. Something kind of new. I haven't done this before. Uh, basically, an entire scape just made of epiphyte plants and mainly using the plant decor from Daniela Plants. Uh, this is beautiful, mature plants that already attach with the roots to pieces of decor. Uh, they are ready to use. Uh, so it's super convenient and yeah, we thought why not uh, make an entire escape out of it, like a little challenge and show you how easy it can be and yeah, MJ. Let's get started? Let's get started. Do it. Okay, mate, so what do we have here? Uh, we have a beautiful ancient juniper wood, sustainably collected in the Mediterranean area from Europe and super cool branchy wood, really like using it, has a very unique character, like I said, super branchy twisted, no bulky pieces and yeah, it's one of my favorite hardscape materials. I've got a full box of it and first things first, we're going to lay out all the pieces on the floor to get an overview to make the best choices. So ancient juniper wood, does it do anything to the, to the water parameters? Well, uh, it might release some tannins to the water, mm -hmm. uh, like all wood does, uh, but not too crazy. Uh, it's not like, you know, uh, more wood that, or driftwood. Mm -hmm. This is gonna you know, color the water completely like coffee. Uh, so very light tint from the wood. It sinks quickly, just a couple days. The only thing with the wood is some of it has still some bark on it, like this piece here. Uh, there is some bark remaining. So the bark is going to fall off after weeks or a couple of months. Uh, so it's gonna shed and then, you know, uh, will be more clean. Uh, but the bark can remain in the tank. Uh, I think we're going to use cosmetic sand as a substrate, so uh, spoiler here. Uh, that's why if the bark falls off, uh, lays on the ground, it's like botanical, so why not? We're going to keep it. So of course this aquarium is visible from all sides, so we want to make it look nice from all sides as well. So we're now working on making a composition that's fairly wood heavy in the center and then kind of lightly spreading it out towards the sides. Did we already talk about the size of the aquarium? We didn't, right? No. It's 180p standard size. So it's 180 centimeters from left to right. It's 60 centimeters uh, front to back and it's 60 centimeters tall as well. So what is that, 500 liters? Uh, I think it's uh, like uh, 650. 650. Yeah, but minus the dry chamber I guess like 60, 600 liters. 600 liters, so like roughly 150 US gallons. Um, the only concern I'm having now with this composition is basically the accessibility of the dry chamber. Uh, the dry chamber needs to remain accessible because we're gonna have two pairs of filters going in and out from here and they need to be maintained from time to time, you know, clean, keep your lily pipes clean. That I need to keep in mind. If you have to go in here and do something, that's a little bit tricky, but let's see. Next up, Yuri had this interesting idea to add a few plant baskets to the layout. As mentioned earlier, we're only going to use epiphyte plants, so plants that don't really need substrate. But who knows, maybe in the future we will change our mind. So these baskets can be filled with aqua soil, and this way we can always add in different plants later on. Okay, I think that's the main wood 
layout composition sort of done. We're really happy with it. We might add some small details later, but um, so far it's looking good. Those black plant baskets, we're going to cover them up later with more hardscape and plants and stuff like that. I think the next step is to sort of secure all the, the wood because it's all small branches. So we're going to zip tie everything together. Which rocks are we using, mate? <laughs> I guess uh, my rock choice is gonna make a lot of people hate me, but we are using the Samurai Stone, which is kind of a unusual stone. It is a red stone with the white stripes to it. Very, very special. Uh, but I think this is going to be a very special layout, uh, as we mentioned initially. It is a kid's dental clinic, uh, so for the kids it can be a little bit more crazy, more fancy. So I think this rock is the perfect fit for this because it's so unusual and it looks like from a cartoon. Uh, so definitely not na nature style here. My plan is to secure the wood in position. I mean we glued it at the bottom base but just give it more visual uh, stability by adding some of these rocks around it and yeah, just adding some color to it as well. Okay, so we've placed in the rocks. Yours is now gonna add in the sand. We're just using simple sand that we found at the local hardware store, but it actually looks really, really good. And after the sand is in, we're also gonna add in some nice detail rocks. And I think this is really gonna bring the whole layout together. Okay, there's the sand in, and I think it's looking really good. I think definitely brought the whole thing together. It does still look very clean right now, so we're gonna add in some more uh, smaller gravel. We have some of these small chips here from the same rock, so we're gonna scatter these around as well and add even more details. Okay, slight change of plans. So we're gonna add the uh, sand chips later. We're first gonna start planting because we want to start with some of these, uh, the decor from down the plants. So this is gonna go on the substrate. And I think the kids are gonna love this. We're thinking to add some Maybe some dwarf cichlids and maybe some um, blackos. So these gonna love these caves, of course. We also have the bamboo homes. I <laughs> never escaped the tank with bamboo homes, but uh, it's gonna be the first one. So Yuri is now adding in the Anubias Kirin Mini, also on attached to a little piece of wood. Really nice Nubius with these uh, curly leaves. So that's the foreground area done. Looks really good. Um, but now to make it more natural, we're gonna add in the, uh, the rock chips. So these are gonna blend in with the, uh, the rocks and the decor and just gonna make everything look more, more together, I guess. After we added the small detail stones, we continue with the rest of the plants. We added some beautiful pieces of java fern and bulbitis, and these were already attached to a piece of wood, so planting them was super easy as well. Lastly, we added loads of Anubias. Yuris chose two interesting varieties, the Anubias Pinto and the Anubias Jade, and they were mixed together and planted in all the cracks and crevices on the wood. Right guys, it's now the next day. Yesterday we finished quite late with filling up the tank. So we just came in this morning to a beautiful crystal clear aquarium. One thing I just realized though, that I didn't show you guys the, all the equipment on this aquarium, because it's quite impressive. A lot of things are automated. Let's do a quick rundown of the equipment. So the aquarium is standing on this large aluminum frame. And below that on the right side, we have a large container. This is uh, where we store the RO water. 
this is completely automated as well. The arrow is uh, automatically filling up this entire container and this is enough for like a 30% water change. Then in the center we have the two filters. So we have a ADA Superjet 1200 and a 2400. And then the, the pipes are going through the dry, dry chamber up through here. And then we have two outflows and two inflows. Really, really nice filters. And then next to that we have basically like a sink. So this is um, yeah, just a large container. And when you want to do a water change, all the dirty water will go in here. Once it reaches a certain level, a pump will kick in and uh, drain the water out. Here we have the RO system. So this produces around about 500 gallons per day. So this is plenty enough to fill up this bucket in like two, two and a half hours. And then lastly, on this side, we have the CO2 system. This is also automated with a pH sensor. It's set to 6.73. So the CO2 still needs to kick in. Oh, and we also have a like auto top off system. So this is just a small pump that also sits in this container. And then up here we have like a small sensor. So once the water starts dropping to, due to evaporation, this will uh, top it off, make sure that the, the water level is always consistent. Okay guys, that's the project completed. I'm really happy with it. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm happy as well. And I'm looking forward to see the happy kids gathering around the aquarium once the fish are in and kind of fingerprints all over the glass. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of sad that I'm not here to, to see their reaction as well. But yeah, I think uh, we need to make an, an update video of this aquarium. So either I will have to come back or you will have to do an update video on this aquarium. So make sure you are subscribed to Yuri's channel. Do you have anything else to add? Eat some aqua soil. <laughs> no, <guess>. don't do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Goodbye.